All right, guys, welcome. Uh, this is Coach Baseball Rights uh, Leadership Meetup, and uh, we are uh, October 19th. Our leadership meetups are every first and third Tuesday of the month uh, at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, we, we Zoom with people all over the country, um, all over the world, New Zealand and uh, England and, and other places. Um, but um, if you are an administrator or an organizational um, board member, um, this is a, a time for you to kind of check in, uh, to kind of listen, um, listen uh, with different topics and, and provide feedback and collaborate with others across, across the, the U.S. and the world. So thank you for, for coming uh, tonight. Um, tonight's topic is hitting and how can organizations begin to implement kind of a hitting philosophy or hitting um, guides and, and resources throughout their organization to get everybody on the same page. Uh, before we begin and turn it over to Steve here, I want to show you, uh, show everyone here uh, where exactly um, you can find some of these resources. So if you are a member, whether that's a free member account, an individual pro membership, or an organizational pro membership, um, you can log into your member dashboard and under administrator uh, guides and resources, you can access a bunch of different uh, free things that we have to offer. Um, if you are looking for the leadership meetup archives, uh, we record these videos and we'll upload them here under a separate tab here under administrator uh, versus lead meetup archives. Tonight, we're going to be uh, looking at um, our hitting basics guide. We also have a, a common hitting flaws guide, uh, both of which are in coach and parent sections under guides and tutorial. So you will see that uh, later on. Uh, so, I'm, Steve, I'm going to go ahead and turn to you um, and get us going on thinking about hitting at the organizational level. Yeah, hey, thanks, Tom. Hey, welcome, everybody. You know, guys, before we, we jump specifically into the hitting, I, I just want to say something. Um, when we designed Coach Baseball Right, uh, I think I had this idea of, you know, baseball drills and baseball skills and and the fundamentals of by position and do some hitting stuff. But as it turns out, we've done a good job with that. But the part that I'm really probably most proud of in the whole program are the guides. You know, tonight we'll do a little bit with the hitting guide. Um, but there are so many other guides in there for coaches uh, to get going and for administrators to start to bring to their organization that uh, that might be. <laughs> Uh, you know, the highlight of our Coach Baseball Right program. But tonight, we'll focus in on just one. That's the hitting guide. You know, um, I thought about this. I was in bed the other night thinking about, you know, what, you know, what are we going to talk about when we come to this? And to be really honest with you, uh, we're not going to get all that technical in terms of the, the specifics on, on hitting. Um, I just want to say this. If you're an organization and you've got one team or 100 teams underneath you, the question I have is, what are your expectations for your coaches when it comes to hitting? Um, my gut feeling is, is that most organizations kind of let the coaches do what they want to do, which might be some really great things all the way to nothing. And my suggestion to you, <clears throat> like, my suggestion on many other topics, you know, behavior, uh, um, you know, uh, practice planning, things like that, is to have some type of expectations for hitting. Um, so imagine uh, some simple expectations like um, uh, specifically you would want to all your coaches to teach your kids that they need to plane the pitch, right? Doesn't mean swing up or swing down. It means slightly, ever so slightly swing in the path of the ball. And your coaches should know what that means. Um, power in the swing can come from torque, from the separation of the bottom half and the top half. Um, staying sharp to the ball. Staying sharp to the ball. We don't want a, a real long swing. We want to stay sharp to the ball. Now, those are just three basic concepts. But if you can start there. 
with some simple expectations on what should be taught, that would be better than what 80% of the organizations are doing today. So um, I would say to you that you need to have some expectations and then you have to kind of figure out um, what is it as far as resources that you would provide for all the coaches in the organization as well as all the parents in the organization. And what I mean by resources, it might be something like uh, a hitting program, uh, an online hitting program that we offer, or it might be something like a suggestion on what to look for from an outside hitting instructor. Or it might be a specific resource on how your coaches can run um, an offensive batting practice kind of a practice. So you can see, again, we start with a general expectation, some specific principles on hitting that, that I think most people would agree on. Um, and then down here, some specific resources. Is it a hitting program? Is it a hitting guide that we'll talk about that you'll provide? Some type of resource, something at the resource level that you need to give your coaches and your parents. So um, that's that's sort of a quick intro to to um, to this. And I think what we're going to do now, Steve, is, real, uh, Steve, real uh, quick, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, real quick. Uh, how would you recommend these uh, leaders and administrators? How would you recommend? Is this like something that they cover in you know preseason coaches meeting? Um, because, you know, one of the things that I think we do a great job of is, is helping organizations separate themselves from, from other organizations in their community, right? What, practically speaking, how does, an, how does a board member, how does a, you know, a coach's, coach's ed, educator, how do, how do they implement, you know, the philosophy, much less the resources? What do you, do you have any ideas? So one one thing that I would suggest, um, you know, hitting and, and, and pitching and coaching, <laughs> they're all important parts of of the game and the and probably the organization. But uh, I would suggest an organization have a hitting um, a lead hitting guy, a lead hitting czar, um, kind of a lead hitting master. And it's not that he has to be the master in terms of uh, he's going to teach everybody hitting, not at all. But he would be the guy that would be appointed by a board that would would uh, curate all the resources for all the coaches and then lay out the expectations um, of the coaches that every coach would at least adhere to at some basic level. And then he would also be the guy that would would have uh, and make available to them the specific resources. And that would come, um, you know, from the organizational level. So it's almost like, you know, how you have an equipment manager, right? You know, uh, you have a coaching director, uh, maybe you have a hitting director. Um, and, and it just seems to me that that's, that's an important part of, of the game. And to be honest with you, I think most people, they kind of step back and just let the kids do what they do. And the end result is a lot of misinformation and a lot of talent goes um, unmaximized, let's say. So I, I like that. And, and that could be very helpful for our um, partners, our organizations who are our members, our organizational members. Um, I'm wondering if, if that's something where we can contact them and say, you know, as the president, you don't have to be in charge of hitting, you know, but somebody needs to, to notify people that they have access to our hitting program, right? The 20 day hitting program, for instance, or somebody's in that organization at the leadership level needs to tell parents or families rather and coaches that they have access to, um, you know, the hitting basics guide or the common hitting flaws guide. So, so in a way, they're responsible for making sure that message for those available resources are out there. They're responsible for, you know, getting the message about the three principles of hitting out to the organization. I, I like that. And, and, you know, Tom, you know, what we're really trying to do is help organizations uh, stand apart from other organizations, their competition. 
And I think this is another clear cut way that um, we can help an organization separate themselves from their competition down the street. And what does it mean when you do that is a, you give your parents and players a better experience. B, you provide more resources for your coaches, players, and parents. And at the end of the day, you keep more coaches uh, coming back to your program, as well as more kids and parents coming back to those respective teams. Right. No, that's good. That's good. Thanks. Hey, can we uh, can we show everybody the uh, the guide now? Yeah. Do you have access to sharing or? Uh, well, let's see. Here you go. Okay. You want me to share? Uh, yeah. Um, I think you can you can do that now. Okay, so let me, I had it up here just a second ago. Let's see here, I think. Yeah, that's it. So let me come here and do my sharing. And we'll go right here. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I'm at the guides and tutorials underneath coach and parent. And I would like to go to the Hitting Basics Guide, okay? And this, this document has quite a bit of information. Um, and it, the thing I, I like about it is, you know, it's not like you're going to read a book on hitting, but you're going to read a short article on hitting, so to speak, that will get you going, right? It's going to give you some basic understanding and let you feel a lot more confident about what you're trying to do with your kids than if you didn't read the article, okay? So it talks about the three main principles of hitting, right? Which is playing the pitch. Um, and, and it actually has a really good analogy for you. So, so this is right from Ted Williams' book, right? Uh, the, the Science of Hitting. Uh, ball coming down and a swing going slightly up in the blue area. Um, is your contact area, which is a lot more contact area than a level swing, level to the ground on a ball going down. And I wish they would have had the third one, which is a swing going down and a ball going down and you have an X, right? And that would be the worst case scenario. So um, that's, that's a, a, you know, the principle number one, playing the pitch. Principle number two is, is torque is how you generate power. And you can see the bottom half here is going before the top half. Okay, you can see it here and you can see it here as well in this particular swing. Um, and the third principle is just staying sharp to the ball, right? Staying sharp to the ball. We don't want our hitters to be long, long, slow swings. Uh, think of a guy who has bat drag. A guy who has bat drag when, when um, the elbow gets in front of the knob, you know, and the bat is dragging through the zone. That's a real slow swing. So we don't want that. Um, and then we talk some sp specific strategies for beginner and youth players here. And we talk here about batting practice, you know, how it should be meaningful. And actually, we talk about, you know, the difference between four and five year olds and, and maybe 13 year olds, how you would do a batting practice. And I'll just give you a, just a quick, a quick overview. If I was working with four and five year olds, I want them to swing at whatever they can reach. I want them to swing at whatever they can reach. I want them swinging. If I'm working with kids that are 13 on a pretty good ball club and, and it's competitive, by the time you're 13, you should know what you want to hit, what you like to hit, and you should be able to make choices. So your batting practice would be reflective of making choices. What's that? Um, you put a kid in the cage, you're doing front toss, and you're going to give him five pitches that are middle in, but really only three are going to be middle in, two are going to be not middle in, and he'll have to make a choice to take those two pitches. And then he learns how to hit a pitch middle away, and you'll have five pitches. But to be honest with you, what's going to happen is um, three of those will be middle away. He'll swing, but two of them won't be, and he'll have to take those pitches. So he'll be making choices. You have two strike scenarios where you want to expand the zone, right? But you still don't want to swing at ball three. So when you have two strikes, you'll throw three of them that are swingable two strike pitches, but you're going to throw two of them that aren't. That makes the kid or helps the, 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 the player begin to make choices. So we talk about batting practice and we talk about a hitting approach. 
uh, and the batting practice and hitting approach kind of work hand in hand. Um, then we talk about what is it that most good hitters do? You know, it, it, and we try to break down a video clip at the, the front toe touch, things that you can see there, things that you can see at the approach, things that you can see during the swing and identify some commonalities, right? Uh, and then we start to identify some hitting flaws. What's bat drag, swinging down on the ball, bat wrap, timing, things like that. Then we make some recommendations. Okay, a recommendation might be join our Swing Like a Pro online hitting program, right? Um, and it's funny, Tommy, I, wanna, I was going to throw this out to you. Uh, the other day in the, one of the papers, whether it's USA Today or, or St. Louis Post-Dispatch, I don't recall, um, there's a new thing happening around the country with virtual hitting instruction. Oh, nice. Now, we were doing virtual hitting instruction uh, for, uh, during COVID. And as you guys know, one of, one of my most loyal hitting clients is a kid from Australia. So the idea of an online hitting program is certainly uh, it's here and it, it can and should be used. Um, but not only that, uh, we have an online hitting academy um, that it makes uh, that, that's available to the players. Uh, we have a virtual situation that's available. We have a swing like a pro software that's available um, all those things are available for people to to use um, we also and this, i'm pretty proud of this we have a hitting instructor checklist so you work or you live in a city where you have plenty of opportunity to visit a hitting instructor what should you look for in a hitting instructor so these are all things that i think uh, we can help you with and, and we have sense. that checklist i'll just go ahead and click on this now because i want our our viewers to be able to see this. Um, and did I click on the wrong thing? If you go to uh, member dashboard, Steve, under guides and, and, and resources. Okay, member dashboard. And is it the administrator guides and resources? Uh, go to coach. This one here, guides yeah. and tutorials? Yep. Okay. And then what I want to do, guys, is I want to go to the Oops, let's see what we got here. There we go. Oops, am I there? I'm clicking that, Tom, right here. There, there we go. go. And I want to find, where is it at here? I know I saw it earlier today. There it is on the lower left. Okay, so I want you guys to see this. Because a lot of parents, they don't have any uh, help when it comes to picking out an instructor. So we talked about, uh, you know, the demand for good, high-quality hitting instruction is increasing. And how do you know if you're getting good instruction? Um, and we talk about some coach baseball right hitting resources. But we also, down here, go very specifically, okay, into some things that you want to find out when you go and get a hitting instructor. You know, does the instructor have a basic philosophy that's rooted in research and current best practices? Is the hitting philosophy and principles clearly posted for you and your child? Does your instructor describe their philosophy and principles in a way you can understand? Can your child articulate what these principles are and explain them to you? So you're trying to kind of grade potential instructors in these areas. Um, so, so Steve, I, I think this is a good, a good time to, to kind of refresh and, and come back to that idea. If your organization, if your leadership team designates someone to be that hitting czar or that hitting educator, right? This person could use these resources that, that we offer for free and, and for our pro memberships to help guide them on what, what they need to do to get out to the community, what they need to, to tell their organization, the families, the coaches, you know, so essentially we, we've done the work for them in the sense that these are the resources they can use to educate their communities. And, and, you know, Tom, everybody wins. I mean, you know, think about it. The parents, the parents win, right? The, um, because they're going to supply a good valuable resource to the kids. The kids win because they're going to be better trained. Um, the better hitting instructors in the community win because they're going to draw clients based on, based on what they're doing in a, in a positive, uh, good way already. And we're, and, and we're just trying to identify them. Uh, but also the organization wins 
because they're providing the resources for their coaches and parents. And once again, we're trying to help them stand apart and make sure that um, they're a place that their parents know are constantly evolving, constantly trying to provide um, a better experience for the kids, coaches, and parents. Now, guys, you can keep going here. You can kind of see, um, you know, all these different things here. Uh, I'm just going to say right here, specific, measurable, attainable goals. Are there specific and meaningful goals that can be attained? Does the instructor communicate and measure this? Okay. And then here are some recommendations from Coach Baseball, right? You know, we've really, really took our time and we tried to, to give you a, a first class tool to help you try to figure out what good instruction would look like. Uh, and I'm not going to get into the, the time and the place to get into this um, isn't now, but I want to just make sure I call the attention to you so that you know this document is here and you know you can use it. Um, I'm just looking at this very quickly here. Uh, can your child identify common hitting flaws and know how to avoid them? Does your child understand what a sound and proper hitting approach is? Um, does your instructor work on any type of pitch recognition? Uh, I, I do want to just say right now that Game Sense Sports, um, they, are, they do a great job providing pitch recognition software. And for every kid I work with, uh, the first five minutes of all my instruction, uh, I deal with A, reading video. How do you read video properly? Um, and B, uh, pitch recognition practicing pitch recognition and I started at a young age because I think that's a, that's kind of like the next level uh, and we want to make sure that we're on the cutting edge of that um, but again there's so many great notes here so many good ideas for you guys um, here's an interesting one does your instructor teach pre-pitch adjustments so what that means is is if you got a kid going to an instructor and, and he's been going to him for a year, year and a half, and, and he doesn't know how to adjust to a curveball. <laughs> like, like it's 0-1, he knows he's going to get a curveball. He doesn't know how to adjust to that. Or he doesn't know how to, uh, you know, if he's facing a pitcher at two strikes, he's got a good fastball, good curveball. The guy's got to make an in-pitch adjustment. So these are all things that should be taking place. And if your instructor is not providing that, maybe you need to look, look elsewhere. Um, so again, this, this checklist will get you thinking and give you guys a plan um, to go out and try to find someone that can meet uh, the needs of, of you and your son. Too many times what we do is this. One of the parents that you know says, hey, go to Bob. He's a good, he's a good guy. It's where I take my kid. And that's about all the research you've done. And for many of our parents, they have no idea. They have no idea whether they're getting good or bad instruction. So this should really help. All right. Steve, we're coming up on 8.30 here. Um, just want to remind everyone that uh, our, next, our next leadership meetup will be the uh, first Tuesday, November 2nd. Um, and... Um, we're still kind of to, uh, to be determined on topic. So if you guys have any any kind of ideas that you want to float to Steve and I, uh, please let us know. Um, other than that, Steve, I, I don't have anything else here. Um, if if uh, guys that are on the call, if you guys have anything regarding hitting and how, how to implement hitting uh, philosophies and practices at the organizational level, let us know. Hey, Tom, I, I also, I, I just want to add, we have plenty of ideas uh, sure, for you no, guys in terms of uh, coaching portfolios, uh, practice planning, um, you know, uh, a coach, coach meeting with parents. Uh, I, I have to tell you, and, and Tom, we've talked about this uh, outside of these meetings. If there is ever a time for you guys and your organization to provide solid infrastructure for your coaches and solid expectations of your parents and players on behavior, uh, this is the time. We've seen we've seen some bad stuff in terms of of um, kind of 
Uh, no expectations. And what happens when you, when you lessen the expectations or you don't have any? So we have a lot of good topics coming up. We just haven't set them exactly uh, what, what you'll have. We'll do that shortly for the next one. And also two weeks from uh, now, let's see, two weeks from two nights ago. So uh, on a Sunday, we'll have um, our second round of, uh, I think this is going to be bunt defenses, kind of an advanced advanced uh, situation. And we'll try to either Facebook Live that or put it on on Zoom. I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm thinking of changing over to Zoom, uh, but I'm not sure what we'll do with that yet. But that's in two weeks. We'll do our, um, that'll be on a Sunday evening at, I believe that's at seven o'clock, seven to seven thirty. Uh, and that'll be, um, advanced bunting, um, defenses. Tom. All right. That's all I have, Steve. Um, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we will have this published and uploaded, uh, this video recording of the leadership meetup, um, hopefully tonight, if not for sure tomorrow. Um, guys, thanks for coming and, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks guys. Have a great week.